Welcome to the final phase of the IT project management life cycle, the closeout phase. The previous phase, which is the execution and control phase, ends with the acceptance of project deliverables. In this phase, the closeout phase, the project team will document the lessons learned from the project and transfer the deliverables to operation staff who will use and maintain the deliverables as an ongoing activity. Part of this phase involves having the project manager capture the lessons learned from the project and developing a lessons learned document. This document will serve as an input for similar projects in the future, allowing these projects to run more smoothly. Another document to develop is the project closeout report, which consists of studies of variances between the actual and baseline performance goals, project cost, and schedule. It also includes a description of ongoing operation and maintenance plan. Let's have a look at the activities of this phase. The first activity is to conduct closeout meetings with different project participants in collecting and discussing their feedback so that lessons learned are captured. These meetings also help the project manager in developing a plan for project transitioning. With the information collected from the meetings, the project manager will develop a lessons learned document that describes the things that went wrong and well throughout the project life cycle and with recommendations. Closeout report is developed to document the variances from the baseline plan. It is important to ensure that all project documents are properly stored for future accesses. This phase ends by having the deliverables transferred to the operation staff. And this is the end of the project in the IT project management life cycle. The project team will then dispense. Let's go through the major activities now. Conduct closeout meetings. This phase begins by conducting meetings with different participants of this project, which include but not limited to the stakeholders who took part in different project activities such as requirements elicitation and acceptance testing and the project team members. The purpose of these meetings include identify lessons learned, discuss things that went wrong and well during the project, and determine how the experiences earned from this project can benefit similar projects in the future. Develop transition plan. Discuss the arrangements of the transitioning of project deliverable to operation staff Develop post-implementation review plan. Discuss the dates for post-implementation reviews. Now that you've completed the identification, initiation, planning, and execution and control phase of the IT project management life cycle, it's time to document the lessons learned based on both the positive experiences and the negative experiences that result in undesirable outcomes. Lessons learning is a process to convert experiences into knowledge to aid future decision making and problem solving. It helps improve project performance, avoid mistakes from happening again, and maintain good practices. A typical lessons learned document consists of three parts. Project successes, which are the key successes of the project. Project challenges and difficulties which are the difficulties faced during the project's life cycle. Shortcomings, which are the tasks and decisions performed and made wrongly. Let's take a look at some examples for each of them. Project success refers to the key successes achieved by the project. Instead of just describing the successes the project has had, it's more valuable to state the factors that contribute to these successes so that similar projects can repeat the successes. Here is an example. The project activities were complete as planned. Factors that contribute to this success include having project risks identified early and discussed often, which reduces the chance of changing schedule. Project challenges and difficulties. Project challenges and difficulties refer to the conditions not under the control of the project team, which affects the project negatively. This time you have to describe the challenges faced and a solution recommended, as explained with an example. It's required that the existing system must be kept running whilst the development of the new system. It's not something the team did right or wrong, but a situation the team has faced and required tackling, which was a challenge. So based on this challenge, a solution is recommended. 
it's recommended that the development and production environment should be separated. A recommended solution can be one that's implemented and found effective. It can also be a better alternative of the implemented option. Shortcomings are the tasks that were done wrongly or poorly, or any decisions made incorrectly. It's sometimes confused with challenge and difficulty, yet it is neither. To make it simple, challenges and difficulties are adverse situations that require resolving in order for the project to complete, while shortcomings are faults and failures. Take a look at this example. The team failed to communicate effectively, which is obviously a failure. Again, a recommended solution has to be made. In this case, it's advised that an instant messenger can be used. Develop code report. The deviation between project result and project plan is inevitable. Part of this activity involves identifying the variances from the baseline plans in terms of project performance, project cost, and schedule. Besides stating the plan and actual figure, it is important to state the variances and, most important, an explanation of why such variances exist. Let's take a look at the contents of a typical closeout report. Performance goals describe how the project performed against each performance goals established in the project performance plan. Project cost state the plan and actual cost of the project. It also documents the variances and explains why such variances exist. Document the initial approved schedule baseline against the actual completion dates. It also describes the schedule variances with explanation. Scope changes. Document any changes to the project scope and their impact on performance, cost, or schedule baselines. Project resources. Identify to whom each project resource was transferred and when it was transferred. Account for all project resources utilized by the project. Operations and maintenance plan and cost. The plan for operation and maintenance of the project deliverables. It states the estimated annual cost of operations and maintenance. Project documentation. Identify all project documentation materials stored in the project's library or other repositories. It identifies the type of media used and the disposition of the project's documentation. Post-implementation review and report. Identify the dates for completing post-implementation reports and the person responsible for these actions. Open issues. The open issues for resolution within the context of project closeout. Archive project documents and artifacts. The project manager has to work with other project participants in storing all project documents and artifacts for future use or references. He also needs to ensure that all necessary approvals and signatures are present. Besides, make sure the required final versions of documents are archived in auditable form in an agreed-upon place, and ensure that they cannot be edited. Store the other project artifacts according to the agreed-upon procedures. Conduct transitioning activities. The project is about an end. You have to transfer the physical product and any other knowledge required to operate it to the operation staff who will use and maintain the product as an ongoing activity. Generally speaking, the transitioning involves the transfer of the items below. Knowledge transfer. The knowledge required in order to operate with the end product. Examples include an understanding of how the products gear up with the business workflow, how features work, any login credentials required, and any assumptions made, who can be contacted for help, and how. A user training could be a good method for knowledge transfer. Documentation transfer. The written material that gives instructions or information regarding the use of product. Physical transfer. Physical return over control of the product to the operational unit responsible for supporting it. Let's have a quick summary of the closeout phase. In this phase, the project team documents the lessons learned from the project and transfer the deliverables to the operation staff who will use and maintain the deliverables as an ongoing activity. The core activities involve conduct closeout meetings with different project participants in identifying lessons learned, developing transition plans, 
and post implementation review plan. Develop lessons learned. Document the lessons learned from the project. Convert experiences into knowledge to aid future decision making and problem solving. Develop the consult report. Part of it involves identifying the variances from the baseline plans in terms of project performance, project cost, and schedule. Archive project documents and artifacts. Ensure project documents and artifacts are properly archived for future use and references. Conduct transitioning activities. Transfer the physical product and any other knowledge and documents required to operate it to the operation staff who will use and maintain the product as an ongoing activity. This is the end of the IT project management life cycle and the end of the IT project management framework video series. Thank you so much for watching. We hope you enjoyed this video series. Have a try on Visual Paradigm for project management today. It provides a guide through process navigator that walks you through the entire project management life cycle and assists you in completing all the process documents involved. For more details, check the official website www.visual-paradigm.com Goodbye!